Hey, welcome back to this really interesting video series where I'm going to be forging a not not a not replica of this Persian dagger. So what I mean by not replica is that I'm going to make something that's inspired by this. It's not going to be historically accurate. It's not going to be a museum replica of this item. And creating replicas of historic pieces is never something that I've been interested in. But I do like making things inspired by older pieces. Whenever I make things like this, like if I call something a kyber sword or if I like you know, Kyber sword esque, or if I call something like a Kopesh sword esque, it's, I'm not trying to say that this is a replica of the sword. There are no rules in how you make stuff. I simply make what I think looks cool and, you know, model, modeled after these old knives. So that's what I'm going to be going for is something similar to this. Um, I've got some Damascus steel here. It's a simple random pattern, high layer count, random pattern, Damascus steel. This is actually some of the Damascus that was used on the axes that I just finished up with Jason Lennon for the Blade Show. So I'm going to be using this billet to forge out an integral Persian dagger. So this Persian dagger, I'm not exactly sure what it's called yet. I need to look up and do a little bit more research on what this is called. But what struck my eye and what I think is unique about this knife is that it doesn't actually have a sharpened edge. I mean, it doesn't look like it has a sharpened knife edge so this looks like it's just a flat um, section and then it goes into this thick square cross section that is just a point like it's like a rhino horn it's just meant for stabbing it's not meant to cut or slice um, like I said I'm not an expert on this but to what this looks like is is just something really unique flat turning into a thick cross section for stabbing. So I want to make something really similar to that with this Damascus billet. So let's do it. That was good. I just put that Damascus billet in the forge. The first thing I'm going to do to it when it's hot is actually upset it, which makes it thicker and shorter. I'm going to squish it end to end. Um, just so I can get a little bit thicker material there for the integral guard and I know I have enough material for whatever shape that I want to make. And also it's going to distort the Damascus pattern more which is actually good for this type of pattern just because it's a random pattern and you want a random pattern to be all over the place and crazy so the more distortion that I can do to it the better so hopefully that will actually enhance the pattern. thinking about what I want to do for the handle material or the handle construction because I want this to be kind of fancy it's going to be Damascus so why not go you know all out with some more exotic handle materials like mother pearl or fossilized um, what's this walrus fossilized walrus or woolly mammoth ivory so really you know, a lot of you that follow me know that I like to wing things like I don't plan things out I get an idea of what I want to make and I just start it and kind of develop as I go. And for whatever reason, that usually actually ends up better for me than if I draw something out now and every detail before I start. Some people aren't like that, but I am. So uh, what I need to decide right now before I actually start forging this thing out is whether or not I want to do a full tank or a hidden tank because that can determine what kind of handle I want to put on. So if I do a full tank handle, that means um, of course, I'm going to have scales, so I could use something like this, kind of the scales, and I'd have to do what's called an air loop fit, which is where the scales are actually proud of the tank, just slightly, it looks really nice, it's like a presentation grade fit, um, and the tank would all be polished in Damascus, or um, I could do a straight up hidden tank, Damascus, where I use a wooden block, and then inlay some materials in there, like mother or I could do a hidden tank and do a frame handle construction, which is where I would still use scales. But the tank, the actual Damascus steel tank would be hidden. You use a false tank, which is called the frame. So I would put like black G10 or 
whatever hand of material I wanted to as the false frame tang, and then the scales would go on top of that. So I need to decide real quick what I want to do. I don't know yet, so I'm gonna keep thinking about it. difficult to forge things square on my press because it's so worn out it shifts back and forth like you look at the dies they're not square see how it shifts like that so it's kind of challenging to get things square but here's the block that's ready to be made into a knife Then I have to block and draw off the tank. These dies are at an angle, so it's actually pinching the steel. It gives me a cleaner shoulder. I 
heat one on the tank. I've left myself a lot of material in the center here, more than I normally would. Because I'm going to go in and actually shape this a little bit differently. And the integral section is going to be fairly long. That way when I go in and grind it later, I've got plans to grind into that and create some cool shapes. It looks so weird right now. It doesn't look like a knife right now, it's so strange. I'm just going to keep drawing out that square taper and keep in mind that this section right here is going to be flattened out into this first half of the blade. I 
might work. I'm just gonna go for it. We'll see if it works. I'm gonna take it up through a welding gate, flatten it down. If I had actually stuck to the plan that I said that I was gonna do, it would for sure work, like without any doubt, that would have been a good method of doing this. But you need that thickness there, and it's not as thick as I wanted, so I'm just gonna flatten it, and hopefully it works out. I think I'm going to have to untwist it. I'm going to have to untwist it and then reforge it into the other direction. So I don't have... Uh, I'm worried that I don't have enough material here to, uh, for the Picasso. Because of the way the material is twisted like off-center. And because there's not a lot of it, I can't forge it into place like I wanted to originally. So... Untwist it and go to plan B. This is gonna look really ugly until it doesn't. And it will look pretty no sooner than it does. Yeah, it's starting to get the ridge now in the right direction. battling right now is fixing the mistake that I made which was uh, getting ahead of myself and forging it down thin before I twisted it so then I twisted it untwisted it and it's caused a little bit of a weird area right there where the twist was and that's the only area really that's kind of messing me up right now I don't think it's gonna cause a problem with the end product so I'm just trying to clean it up at the moment straight I'm gonna start creating some of the curves in the blade so this first one is gonna go downwards I'm trying to do this without deforming the shape of the knife too badly I'm referencing this photo here again I'm not trying to make it exact I'm just trying to get inspiration from this That's pretty close to what I want. I think that's what I want. Got a nice S shape to it. Now all I need to do is straighten it. 
got everything else taken care of. trying to clamp it so I can straighten it. I think this will work. That worked out pretty good. I need to do the tang now. Thanks so much for sticking out to the end of this video. Here's the forged dagger so far. Um, I think it turned out fairly good for the first attempt at this type of a knife. It was it was fairly difficult, not gonna lie. It was kind of different forging out a blade that has two thicknesses. It's almost like forging a double integral because you got like an, a chunk here and a chunk here and you got these two sections in between that you have to worry about. So, um, it was different, but uh, I think it's going to turn out pretty good. In the next video, I'm going to be rough grinding this knife, cleaning it up, straightening it, and getting everything ready for the heat treatment. I also want to go over really quickly the possible difficulties that I'm going to run into with this project and what will be easy with this project compared to like a normal integral knife. So, um, getting this section here that's thick uh, and square in line with the rest of the blade may be difficult because it's also tapered and I, I haven't thought through yet how to straighten that because you know with a normal knife blade it's a flat long thing you can just lay it down on a surface you can clamp it and bend it however you need to but this is a lot thicker and it's not flat in line with the same same plane so it's gonna take I think it's gonna take some extra thinking about how to get that all centered up, square, perfect. Um, getting these bevels here the same width and symmetrical on all four sides, you know, and having a nice line that goes down the center. I think just this section in general is going to be fairly difficult. Um, on the plus side, there's no sharpened edge, and I'm not grinding a bevel, so this section right here is going to be super easy. Um, the tang will all be easy. So it's really just like if I can get this good then uh, I think everything else will be fairly downhill. Um, and I've got, I've got all sorts of different ideas planned that I could do for like inlays and different carving I could do into the steel for uh, the final product. So stick around for the next part in this video series to see more of this dagger being made. I also wanted to remind you that these shirts are now out. Hoffman Black Smithing shirts, they're only here for two weeks. If you're looking for a way to support this YouTube channel and keep it going so we can actually produce videos, then purchasing a t-shirt is the number one best way to do that besides subscribing and sharing with your friends. So if you want to get a t-shirt, check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and a like below and be sure to share with your friends. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.